Whoa, look at these leaves, man. Uh, I'm going to the closest body of water to me other than two lakes. And this one's not even called a lake. This one's called a bog. It's tiny. Anyways, let's go fishing. <laughs> It's coupling. These are just like couplings to put two inch and a quarter PVCs together. And those uh, just finish it off, make it a little nicer. And to make bait casters work, I'm gonna cut a more rounded slot out of the top. They're not perfectly in line with each other, but you know, it looks pretty good. And then I actually put these for my big stick rod. I'm gonna perfect that and then try it. But the boat's already off, it's right there. Let's go get a water temperature reading. This is a little retention pond. And a lot of things have happened to it lately. I know for a fact that there used to be bass in it. There's a chance they no longer exist or they, you know, or there's very few or whatever, but we're surrounded by roads and it's nasty. It doesn't have a lot of weed growth because it has very little light penetration. Let's get a water temperature right now. The further down you reach, in theory, the cooler it will be, but uh, on, on a warm day, it's a warm day. So let's see. Okay. 53 degrees surface water. That's a, uh, we're getting into that fall temperature. 50 degree water in the springtime is when you start getting excited about bass fishing. Generally, some of the bigger females will be up shallow in most of these lakes. And when it hits about 55, you get really excited because most of them will be shallow or most of them will be actively feeding anyways. I'm hoping that the reciprocal is true the fish perceive that it's getting colder and colder and at some point they shut off. But I'm thinking that um, they're still in their fall frenzy. I've seen a lot of squirrel activity in the last week. Squirrel activity and warm water fish activity generally uh, ebbs and flows together. Some of the same ecological environmental pressures act on them the same way. Squirrels hibernate, bass hibernate, but in a totally different way, of course. And, oh, I just got, oh, I just got a nice bite. That was a big fish. It felt like a hard strike. like. How did I not hook that fish kind of a strike? Okay. Well, there's fish in here. Oh, that's a fish. <laughs> it's so weird. I've been catching lots of spinnerbait fish without using it like a spinnerbait. Oh, it's a big fish. Ooh, it's biting hard too. That's so weird, man. Am I gonna... Am I gonna land this guy? I don't even know if he's hooked. So I cast it in there. This fish jumped up and grabbed my lure before I even started reeling, which is fine. It happens all the time, but with a spinner bait, it's like not the presentation you're going for. And man, he's cold. I wish I had my little heat gun right now because this fish is like a 50 degree fish. I kind of want to keep a fish today. This is not the place to keep a fish though. This hurts me more than it hurts you. I'm actually gonna kill this fish because I want to see what it ate. I want to see if it ate a sunfish or a crawdad or a bunch of crawdads. And we're going to do a catch and cook too, I think. Nice fish. Part of the reason we're doing this is pond management. In a body of water that is this big, one person has a little bit of control over the outcome of the pond. And what I mean by that is I personally can create bigger fish by keeping one or two smaller ones. It reallocates food to the already big ones. In places like Lake Washington, that's not gonna be true. You can keep all the fish you want and you won't have any influence over that fishery as, in, as one individual. Keeping this fish is going to catch me a five pounder next spring. I really can't feel much in this guy's stomach. Big eggs. This fish was just getting ready to spawn. Yeah, it's just a really thick fish. It actually has an empty stomach though. This is uh, my refrigerator. Super not advised that you eat fish out of this system. I don't do super good in this uh, body of water. Usually I catch one, uh, not usually. Usually uh, a good day is one and that's like every other time. Plastic garbage bags is something I keep with me in this truck. Somehow right now, I don't have any. Oh, is that a Tupperware? I got a Tupperware that I put holes in and electronics. This is an adapter. I plug a big boat battery into this so I can charge a phone. I guess I'll put the filet in here on the bank. If you're a YouTuber, you need to charge all the time. And put it in there like that. 
hope a freaking rat doesn't show up. I'm pretty disappointed that uh, that fish had nothing in it. Now I'm gonna wanna cut the next fat one open and keep doing it until, you know, I find a sunfish or something inside of one of them. But I also uh, think I wanna just leave it at one kill. There's only about seven fish in this pond. So, yeah. Well, I just discovered why the bass population is so low. A little river otter lives there, possibly a whole family, and I just saw one of them. They're really good at catching bass, not so much at catching sunfish, especially tiny sunfish. They're too maneuverable. They can dart around small stuff. Bass are uh, a little more open watery. There you go, that's why there's not a ton of bass in here. It's because there's river otters. My GoPro died and uh, it's time to go cook this fish. I am going to do a very simple recipe and let's go do that right now. It's pretty crazy that there's bass in all the retention ponds, if there's good enough water quality. They'll dry up, and a lot of times, um, the water quality will go bad, and they'll have, you know, mass kill-offs. But it's pretty crazy how easily these fish spread, high water events, and bucket biology. You hear that, that birds drop fish too, and I'm sure that happens, but it's probably not super common for a bird to swoop up a fish and go to another lake and then drop it. But uh, I'm sure it's happened before. Thanks again for watching, and that's another Fishing Original.